Hey guys, Don from Creative Appliques here. Thanks for joining me today. I have a new mask design and I am super excited about this one because this one allows you to embroider a design on the front. It has a place for a nose wire and it also has a pocket on the back for a filter. This one is more form-fitting than the one with all of the pleats. So it goes down around the chin. So you have coverage there. It comes around the sides here with a side slot so you have the adjustable um, part here so you can change out the elastics if you need to. There's a place here for the nose wire. And you can do a design on the front. And what's the best part? Say it with me now, it's all done in one hooping. So let's get started on this mask. Okay, so let's talk about the supplies you will need. You will need fabric cut in the um, size of the pieces for the mask you are making. That is all detailed in the written instructions. You are going to need some scissors. These are pinking shears that I like to use on the um, end of the um, cutting it out. You are going to need a rotary cutter to cut the fabric if you like to use that. You're going to need some tape to tape the design in the hoop. I like painter's tape. You are going to need your hoop with some tearaway stabilizer hooped in it. You are going to need some elastic. Um, this is 30 inches and um, I like to use one long piece around my neck and my ears. Um, hemostat forceps, if you like those to help pull the material through the side slots. Something I've found really invaluable for cutting the pieces of the um, fabric is just a an Omni Grid uh, quilting ruler square. This one is 9.5 by 9.5, and I've it's perfect for the masks, making the masks because of the size of those fabrics. And something for your nose wire. So, um, either, you know, a pipe cleaner or this is some rubber floral wire that they have at Dollar Tree that works too. You can also use these. These are um, adhesive fasteners for file folders and I like them because they've got a nice good uh, strong metal that um, you can bend easily. You can also cut it easily if you need to make it narrower. Um, I don't it, take off the paper. I don't make it adhesive, but um, that's just the way they come. So something for the nose wire. And of course your thread and your machine and the design loaded to the machine. So let's get to stitching. Okay, now we're going to prep the pieces. So piece A is going to be the front of my mask. There is no preparation for piece A. Set that aside. Piece B is going to be the pocket top. So we're going to put right side down and fold it in half and press. That's piece B. Piece C we will do the same exact thing as we did with piece B, right side down. And fold it in half and press. Piece D is going to be the nose top. Again, right side down, fold it in half, 
and press. Same thing with piece E. It's going to be the chin bottom. Right side down, fold it in half, and press. So piece B, C, D, and E, we all do the same thing. We fold it in half, wrong sides together, and press. So piece F is the side slots. And I'm going to show you a little time saver here. So for I am making the large mask for myself today in this video. And with that, the side slots are four inches high and three inches wide. So what I did is I cut it four inches high and six inches wide. I cut, I doubled the width. So I only have to do the pressing on one piece and then I'll cut it in half. So I'll take the right side down and I'll fold it in half and I'll just finger press it because I don't want it completely um, ironed. And then I'm going to open it up And I'm going to fold the bottom up to the press there, and I'm going to fold the top down, so the raw edges meeting in the middle. And I'm going to press that. Now, I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to take the raw edge into that fold, and then fold it over. Do the same thing with the top piece, right edge into the fold and fold it over. And now I'm going to cut this in half. Actually, what I'll do is I'll fold it in half. And just finger press it. And now I'll meet in the middle with this one. And I'll meet in the middle with this one. And now I will cut it right down this line here and I will have the two pieces that I need for the side slots. And there you go, I just did that without having to do it twice. So now we'll get to stitching. Now we are going to sew the placement stitch. Now we're going to take piece D that we pressed and we're going to line it up on the line, centered on the line. The line is not as wide as the piece, but centered on the line and then we're going to unfold it. So the right side is down and we'll tape it in place. And then we will sew the buttonhole. Okay, so now that uh, we've sewed the buttonhole, I'm just going to take the seam ripper in here and I'm going to slit it right through the stabilizer and right through the fabric. And this way it's easier later on to not have to worry about trying to cut through um, the fab only one layer of fabric. Now that we've sewn the buttonhole, we will fold it again. Tape it down, and then we will sew the nose channel. So 
So now with whatever is easiest, a seam ripper or scissors, to simply remove this right here around the stitching. And we don't need to worry about this stitching. This was just the placement guide, so you can totally just go like that to remove it from the hoop. And now we'll sew the placement stitch for the mask. So there's the placement stitch for the mask. This um, to the right is going to be the nose and this will be to the left is going to be the chin. So if you have fabric that needs to be in a specific orientation, that um, will let you know where that is. So you take piece A and we're going to put it um, right side up, right uh, wrong side down. And we're just going to stitch this in place. Okay, so here is where you would stop the design. And uh, if you're going to sew something on the front of the mask, this is where you would stop it. Then load the design to your machine. Make sure you rotate the design so the top is up here and the bottom is down here. And you want to center it on the mask, wherever you want it to be. I'm going to sew an initial over here. And then I'll sew that initial out, and then I'll return back to sewing the mask. Okay, so now that we stitched the design, we're going to return to the mask, and we will resume with step six on the mask. And this is where we place down the side parts. So the fold is going to be towards the center. Okay, so the fold. So we have the top and the bottoms that we folded in and pressed. And then this is going to be towards the center. And it's just going to slightly be overlapping. Okay, maybe about a quarter of an inch or so. Um, it doesn't need to meet up here with the edge. It just needs to make sure you're covering the stitching. And you also want to make sure that, let me see, I'm going to zoom in here for you to show you. I went over it in red stitching, hoping that it would show up better. So these side pieces, okay, the fold for the is going to be towards the cent center of the mask, towards the center. And we need right here, the entire side thing has to fit between this corner here and this corner here. So it's very important that they fall between that part, okay? So the fold is towards the center, top and bottom that we've pressed in, raw edges out to the side, between the two corners here, and just tape it in place. Now I don't care um, if the painter's tape gets stitched over because to me it's really easy to remove from the stitches. And now I'm going to tape this one over here. And now we'll stitch it down. So now for piece D. When we sewed the side slots on, there is this little part here that sewed out. Okay, These are the guidelines for where to place both the um, chin and nose piece and also the back pockets. So 
we are going to line up this is piece D that we sewed the buttonhole on and the um, nose channel here okay so you can do it one of two ways it honestly it doesn't matter all that matters is that the fold is towards the center of the mask and the raw edges are out if the buttonhole is up when you turn the mask the buttonhole will be on the underside but it will be towards the face and it will be touching the face if you do the buttonhole now where it is down on the front fabric then the buttonhole would be on the outside when you turn it over when you turn the mask over but it won't be against the face so it's honestly a preference it doesn't matter one way or the other it just depends on what you prefer of course when I'm sewing this for the video I do very strange colors just so you can see what the stitching is on the fabrics. If I were to sew this for myself, I would probably be sewing it all in black um, or white. I would change the thread color to match the fabric so that it wouldn't be seen. So this is a preference of yours. But anyway, so on the top line here, we want to make sure that's where the fold is. And then we're going to stitch that down. So now we're going to do the same thing with the um, E piece. We're going to take it and line it up with this bottom line here. Again, the fold is towards the center and the raw edges are out. And tape it down. And then we'll stitch that. Okay, now we're going to take piece B. And we're going to take the fold of piece B and we're going to place it along this line here. So we're essentially going to match it up, meet it up to the top of the bottom part. So the fold from piece B is going to be meeting up with the top of the bottom piece. And then we'll tape it down and stitch it. And now the last piece to be put on before we do the final stitching is going to be the C piece. And we have the fold from the C piece and it's going to meet up here with these corners, okay? These corners here, it's going to just sit slightly below those. And we will tape that in place and then it will stitch the final stitch out for the entire mask. So now we'll remove it from the hoop. Tear away the stabilizer. Trim it. Well, one of the things people ask about is what type of needle and what type of thread to use for this. You are certainly welcome to use an embroidery needle, but you also might want to try um, using a regular sewing needle. I know some people have mentioned that they have had issues with using an embroidery needle. The thread is breaking. So uh, even though this is an in-the-hoop embroidery design, you can use regular sewing thread along with... Um, a regular sewing needle sewing um, you know a, a needle that a sharp needle instead of a ballpoint and if 
you have a problem with using a 7511, you might want to try something larger. So now we're just going to take the hoop, I mean, sorry, the mask, and flip it out through the pockets. So this is going to be for the nose wire. I'm going to take it and I'm going to iron it really well. Now we're going to insert the nose wire. Sometimes it's a little... There we go. I don't really like to cut them down because it adds an extra layer of... Um, just the extra width adds a nice extra, you know, support. So then you just tie the elastics how you like them and how it feels comfortable for you. I like to leave one long piece and just tie two loops over here so I can have around each ear and then have it also hanging around the back of my neck if I need it uh, to take it off while I'm driving in the car between stores but I don't have, it limits my having to take it on and off and on and off and on and off. So there you go. Now one of the things I wanted to mention is I know some people said with the last mask that this um, nose part on the top here was too, too wide. You can simply fold it over and because you have the nose wire in there, it'll stay folded over nicely. Okay, so. That's the mask with the pocket. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you are a subscriber, thank you for um, checking in. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and hit the bell so you're notified when I upload new videos. And if you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up and leave a comment that you appreciated the video and I will continue uploading more content. Thanks for joining me today and make your life creative.